Well, I want to say welcome once again to all of you and thank you for attending this evening's webinar, which is all about awakening your intuition. And in tonight's webinar, we're going to introduce you to seven steps that you need to take in order to access your intuition. And these are seven steps that uh, involve transcending the seven most common blocks that people experience when they want to access their intuition. We're also going to touch upon four of the most common ways that people experience their intuition. There are actually over 20 different ways that you can um, receive intuitive messages, but uh, some are, some are more common than others, and that's the, the main ones that we will talk about today. Very, very briefly, if you don't know who I am, um, my name's Dr. Leslie Phillips. I um, teach intuition at the School of Intuition. And uh, I'm very, very passionate about meditation and intuition. I have a radio show called Unlocking Your Truth that you can tune into and a bunch of podcasts that you can find on my website. And I have the unusual background that I used to be a scientist um, in the pharmaceutical industry until I changed to become an intuitive energy healer. So that's a little bit about me. Now, how do you know if you're in the right place? How do you know if this webinar is going to be of value to you? Well, you're in the right place if any of these seven things on this slide apply to you. So if you have never experienced your intuition but you want to, or you have experienced it but it's not a regular thing and you'd like to make it a regular thing, or you've had some unexplained experiences in your life, if you feel like you are blocked from your higher guidance and you want to find out about getting connected to it, well, those are all really great reasons for being here on today's webinar. I always start with this quote because it really... It really describes what I, what I believe about our world and intuition. And it's a quote from Albert Einstein, who was a scientist, but who operated very much from his intuition. And he said that the rational mind is a faithful servant, but the intuitive mind is a sacred gift. And that we've created a society that honors the servant, but has forgotten the gift. And, you know, it's a story of my life. And I started out um, being told to honor the servant and ignore the gift, and I, but I turned it around in my life. And so I just pause and ask yourself, am I leading from my intellectual mind or my intuitive mind in my life? Am I honoring the servant or the gift? And if you want, you can write down what you think about that in the chat box. So I'm going to also start with just a brief definition of what is intuition. In its broadest sense, it's the ability to understand something immediately without the need for conscious reasoning. The conscious mind, the intellectual mind, the logical mind takes time because it weighs up pros and cons in a stepwise fashion. But intuition is instantaneous knowledge and information. Why might you want to awaken your intuition? Most people think about spiritual reasons for doing so, like I want to know what my purpose in life is. I want to understand myself better. I want to understand other people better. Uh, I want to access my higher guidance and clear what blocks me. It's going to make me more confident and it's going to um, make me feel empowered. But there are other benefits as well, both emotional, mental, and physical. On an emotional level, uh, if you are able to know yourself and others better, it can lead to improved relationships and better emotional boundaries. The path to opening your intuition 
involves meditation and so you get the added benefits of stress relief and being able to let go of fear and anxiety and all of those wonderful things by following the path of the intuitive and on a physical level because you're meditating because you're actively becoming aware of yourself you're becoming aware of what you've created within your energy field and your reality that you like and you don't like and are able to cleanse and clear and let go of what's causing you problems it can have benefits that include better sleep less pain increased energy and an overall healthier body we're working with the consciousness when we develop intuition and so it can help you have increased clarity and better memory. You're happier because you know yourself better and you are uh, walking the path of your choosing. So it can reduce depression as well. And of course, improve your ability to make decisions. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but you know, um, Intuition is starting to come out of the land of Wu <laughs> and uh, because the scientists are starting to research it and are especially interested in people who have to make, uh, oops, let's go back to that previous slide, the people who have to make fast decisions, instant decisions like doctors, nurses in the emergency room or soldiers on the battlefield. They know that they they make decisions based on in intuition and they're trying to understand why so they can train them to do it consciously. The business schools have found that business people lead with their intuition, especially when making fast decisions. And there's been studies like um, this one uh, where pregnant women know the sex of their child without when they haven't had an ultrasound more often than not they know what they're having so there's lots of evidence for intuition so do are we all intuitive what do you think write a note in the chat box about what you think about that are we all intuitive so let's take a look So here's a few facts and figures again. 95% of people say they've had a deja vu experience. Up to 98% of people have had a precognitive dream where they dreamed about the future. And about 20% of people say that they have regularly have lucid dreams or conscious out of body experiences. So pretty much most people in the population have had some kind of intuitive experience. And um, all of these actually relate to uh, dream life and out of body experience. And one of the main reasons is that because most people are trained in their intellect, when you're dropping off to sleep or when you are asleep or when you're just waking up from your sleep, it's much easier to access the intuition because the intellect is not engaged in those times. So that twilight stage is... Uh, common for people to have intuitive experiences so what would it feel like if you were able to answer your own questions whether it's about your career direction whether it's about your finances you know why is my abundance blocked I'd like to know use your intuition to find out that would be fantastic your health you have a health problem um, What's the root cause and what should you do about it? Your in intuition can tell you. Why am I here? What's my purpose? Um, why aren't I attracting a love relationship? And all, all sorts of questions that you could ask that you would be able to answer if you were in um, conscious control of your intuitive senses. So, Without further ado, let's start to take a look at those seven steps to awaken your intuition. If you have a notebook or a journal, grab it now. If you want to participate, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through these seven steps to experience your intuition style. 
And I'm going to talk about the seven most common challenges that I see people have when it comes to their intuition. These are sort of big picture top level challenges. And um, note them down and have a think about, is this something that I suffer from? Is this a problem I have? Is this a challenge I face? And uh, if it is, give yourself a high score. Um, and then you can also write down what the step is to overcoming it. Number one is my life is too busy. I'm too busy. I'm really stressed out. I'm running here, there and everywhere. I have all these responsibilities. People rely on me. I don't have a moment to meditate or turn within to focus on my intuition. That's um, a really common complaint in, um, in our world today. And sometimes it's, um, you know, people, people are putting themselves last and putting other people first. And so they are, or they're procrastinating. So have a think about yourself. How busy is my life? How, how much is, is being too busy a reason that I give for not focusing on myself? And then, of course, step number one to overcoming that is to make a commitment to yourself and develop a consistent practice, a consistent meditation practice, which is what will help you to turn within, to tune out all of those ex the external noise that is making your life seem very busy so that you can tune in turn within because your intuition is inside you and you need to turn within in order to access it. Number two is, I call it drunken monkeys because the Buddha described the human mind as being overrun by drunken monkeys. So is your mind chatter unceasing? Do you obsessively find yourself going over the past, over the future, over your to-do list, judging yourself, criticizing other people, and on and on and on and on, round and round and round and round? Drunken monkeys, do you suffer from incessant mind chatter? If you do, then... Finding a way to quiet your mind is really important for you to be able to access your intuition. Accessing your intuition requires a quiet mind. You need to quiet your mind chatter enough to be able to tune in to that still, quiet voice within. So number two, quiet your mind. The next one I call emotional basket case <laughs> or emotional roller coaster are you constantly going through emotional ups and downs in your life does your personal emotional co roller coaster distract you from your path and your purpose or do you suffer from the effects of other people and their emotions this is a really these these are really common things that people say to me you know other people just they just drain me um you know, I'm emotionally overwhelmed. I can't control my emotions. So is this you? Give yourself a score, a rating from one to 10, how much you are um, tossed under the sea of your emotions. And if it does apply to you, if um, allowing your emotions to dominate your reality applies to you, then um, that's something to be overcome because that can drown out your intuition. If you are engulfed by emotional overwhelm, then you need to learn how to calm your emotions down and how to separate yourself from your emotions so you, the consciousness, can take charge. So the next one is trying too hard. So people get frustrated and they get into effort. They get stuck trying very hard. But if you are in effort, that is actually a sign that your body is attempting to dominate your spiritual journey. Spirit operates without effort 
you are spirit, you are not your body, but your body operates with effort. So whenever you go into effort, that's your body. In fact, everything that we've talked about so far is the body trying to take charge of your reality. The thoughts come from the brain, come from your body. The emotions are your body communicating to you. And uh, being busy is the stuff that your body is doing out there in the world. But intuition is a spiritual ability, is spiritual communication. And so um, it's necessary for you to operate as spirit. So in a way, reading books doesn't help necessarily if you're doing it from your intellect for example so your intuit like i said intuition is guidance from you the high vibration spiritual consciousness and unlike the physical body you are infinite you are formless you exist outside of time and space and you use no effort so step four to access your intuition is to release effort all of those sayings that people say, let go and let God, go with the flow or step out of your own way, they are all true when it comes to your intuition. All right, we have three more blocks to go. Um, and let's just pause and if you like, write in the chat box out of the ones that we've said so far, which are your uh, biggest issues. Is it being too busy, having a mind that won't stop, being in emotional overwhelm or getting into effort. How many of those did you identify with? All right. So let's take a look at the next one, which is number five. And uh, I've named it spiritual perfectionism. And, uh, you know, one of the, what, I mean, basically what I'm talking about here is the ego. People get confused between their intuition and their ego. And one of the signs that you're in your ego is if you're in competition with other people. And that can look different. You know, uh, it could be that you're invalidating yourself and saying, why am I so rubbish at this? Um, or it could be the opposite of that, saying I'm fantastic and they're not. So, or, be, or being it stuck on an expectation of what intuition is and being fixated on achieving an ideal state of being. All of that can get in your way of experiencing your intuition directly in the moment. So, step number five is to let go of your expectations. Because everyone is unique, each individual has their own unique style or unique profile of intuitive abilities, and you're different to everyone else. So let your unique experience of intuition unfold naturally without superimposing ideas about what it should be like, because your friend does it this way or a teacher that you've had does it another way. Just let yourself be you. This is a big one. So... Uh, number six is fear. A big reason why people block their intuition. It can be fear of seeing the truth, fear of seeing yourself, fear of seeing other people, fear of seeing something really scary, fear of change and the impact that the change will have on your life. You know, will, won't they love me anymore? Will they leave me um, if I um, follow this? path of following my intuition and sometimes it can be because of past lives as well where you've been punished for using your intuition so there's a lot that people get afraid of when it comes to this to walking the path of the intuitive step number six banish fear banish your fear feel the fear and do it anyway it's not your darkness that frightens you most but it's your light and usually the fear of something is much worse than the thing itself. So step number six is take back your power and eliminate fear. All right, now the final one of the seven steps. 
uh, relying on your intellect. So I find that the logical mind is a barrier for most people because it causes them to doubt their intuition. And we're so entrenched in our society in having the intellect as our primary operating system. So pe and people are trained to use their intellect and to lead with their intellect when they go through the education system. So, so pe and people get very confused and can't tell the difference between their intuition and their intellect or their intuition and their mind or their intuition and their ego. So you need to learn how to tell the difference. You need to learn how to tell the difference. Uh, you need to be able to validate what is, in, what is your intuition? What is it like when you're operating from your intuition so that you can stop doubting yourself and trust your intuition? So here are the seven steps for you to experience your intuition style. Number one, consistent meditation practice. Number two, quiet your mind, calm your emotions. And actually, I'm going to put up a poll. I'm going to put up a poll and ask you guys to tell us all what was, what was your, what were the issues that rang true for you? So please feel free to start answering that poll. And what we're seeing is for this particular group that's participating in the webinar um, is um, having being too busy an issue, is suffering from a monkey mind and needing to quiet your mind an issue, calming your emotions, needing to release effort, letting go of perfection, overcoming fears and trusting your, inf your intuition. Well, um, so far, I think one of you has filled it out. <laughs> it seems like everything, everything is an issue. So I'm gonna give you another couple of moments to, um, for somebody, so for the other ones to fill it out. So I'm seeing somebody else is starting to fill it out now. And, so interestingly enough, for the ones that have answered, um, getting into effort, being a perfectionist and not trusting in intuition came up the highest. I usually find that busyness, mind chatter and emotions are the top three, um, but only two of you have answered. So thank you to the two who have answered. Um, and we'll chat at the end and we'll find out what, what the other ones identified with. All right, so let's move on. And I'm just showing you the results there. Just very quickly. Okay. Now, actually, it doesn't end there because the next thing that happens is you need to act on your intuition. Obviously, once you can receive it, you know, then what? Have the courage to take action. And that's another place where people get blocked. They get blocked when it comes to taking action on the basis of what their intuition is telling them. You know, what if it tells me to change jobs? What if it tells me to leave my husband? Um, it's kind, kind of scary to follow your intuition. And so, um, so, so that's another block to overcome. Now, just finishing up this section with one more quote from another scientist, um, Nikola Tesla, who recognized um, that, he recognized intuition, that he was free to receive his inspiration from spirit. And like Tesla, you are also a powerful receiver and you have access to any information that you need to support your life journey. All right. So part two of this webinar, the second promise after the seven steps to, um, to uh, awaken your intuition is to, start to take a look at four styles of intuition. So if you want to, if you're taking notes, grab your journal again. And... We're going to look at four different 
modes of or styles of intuition, the challenges of having that style of intuition and what it's like to have that style of intuition. So again, see if you recognize yourself in any of this. Style number one. So I'm starting with the um, challenges typically associated with this one. And it can be, you can be, when you're a kid, it, oh, she's such a sensitive child, that one. Having difficulty with boundaries, difficulty saying no or overstepping the mark with other people. Being a people pleaser, putting other people first, putting yourself last. Getting confused between love, emotions and sexuality. Um, being the, 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 the friend in the group that everyone goes to and tells their emotional woes to. Feeling emotionally drained, confused, overwhelmed, um, and either avoiding confrontation or having a tendency to get in the middle of emotional outbursts and emotional confrontations. So, see if you recognize yourself. See if you recognize um, yourself in, uh, in that one. So let's explain intuition style number one. What I'm actually talking about here is clairsentience. And it seems to be a really common thing these days for people to call this being an empath. So people say I'm an empath because I'm really sensitive to emotions and on an emotional level. And that's actually, it's, it's an intuitive ability that is channeled through the second chakra. This is energy center, two finger widths below your navel which is show, being shown on this diagram. And the primary purpose of clairsentience is body spirit communication. You are spirit, you have a body. Your body tells you how it's getting on by having emotions, kind of like sending you a signal, I like this, I don't like this. Um, but what most people tend to do is they tend to focus their clairsentience outward because is mummy angry? Because I need to know that in order to know if I'm safe. Is, you know, is, is daddy going to have a temper tantrum again? Because I need to know that because I need to protect myself if that's the case. So clairsentience is an intuitive gift where you can tune in to your emotions or the emotions of others. It's meant to help you tune into your own emotions primarily. And what most families and groups of people in our society tend to do is they tend to merge energy. And what that means is that uh, most of us are going around with not just our own energy in our energy field, but everyone else's that we know as well. And then our clairsentience is like a confused signal. It's not a clear signal. Because how do I know if this is my emotion or someone else's emotion? I'm just completely confused because I'm a bag of emotions and not all of them are mine. All right. Oh, there you go. Oh, no. Sorry, I got confused there with my own slide. Um, intuition style number two. Challenges of intuition style number two. So we're moving on to a different way of being intuitive now. And some of them um, revolve around control issues, either being controlled and feeling victimized or having a tendency to feel like you need to control other people or giving your power away to others. As a kid, you might have been called a know-it-all because you had a tendency to share everything you know and... Uh, and also feel like you know better than other people do. So not allowing space for others to have their own authentic knowing because you know and you have your certainty, so you must be right. Um, losing touch with reality, imposing your beliefs on other people and getting lost in other realities or other dimensions. So whenever you hear stories about, um, I don't know, these gurus that go a bit nuts and get their followers to drink Kool-Aid, these people are having challenges with their second chakra and this particular intuitive ability. So style number two explained, it is an aspect of the crown chakra. Uh, there are a couple of names for this. One is claircognizance, which means clear knowing. It's your higher knowing. 
your ability to simply be still and know yourself and know your spiritual information and have instant knowing about everything you need to have instant knowledge about. So if you've ever had the experience where you know something, um, the information just drops in, you know it, you don't know how you know it, um, you don't know where it came from, but you just know without a shadow of a doubt, that is this ability, claircognizance. And a typical example would be, um, Take 911 when um, a greater number than average people knew not to go into work that day. Um, or take an example that you're going to work and you decide you know that you should take another route. And then you find that there's an, been an accident on the route and you would have been delayed. So those might be some examples of your knowingness or your claircognizance. Style number three, you, if you had an invisible friend that you used to talk to when you were a child, <laughs> if you saw dead Auntie Mary sitting in the corner doing her knitting like she always used to while she was still alive, um, then you may have experienced this particular way of being intuitive. And of course, um, what people have, what adults have a tendency to say, there, there, he'll grow out of it. Um, it's his imagination. So uh, our culture tends not to support seeing things that aren't there. Um, and uh, we tend to want to tell children that, that, that they're, not, they're, they're really not seeing anything at all. Um, another challenge, interference from the intellect. Or being distracted by your emotions. So being pulled into those body levels, because this is a, 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 an ability that has a strong... Um, uh, well, they're all spiritual focus, but um, the, the body levels can pull you out of it. Um, fear and past life karma being punished in a past life because you had this. Um, and then also blurting it all out. Um, you know, when people haven't even asked you, don't even want to know what, you, what, what um, you're seeing, but you just feel like you have to tell them anyway. And giving advice rather than information, telling other people what they should do based on what you see. So this is the one that people often think about when they're thinking about intuition. It's clairvoyance or the third eye, which is situated in the center of the brow. And what clairvoyance means is clear seeing. The ability to see as spirit, it confers the ability to see energy, to see out of body beings, such as ascended masters and spirit guides and angels and um, other beings as well. And uh, it allows you to be able to see um, all sorts of energy configurations, whether it's symbols, multidimensional symbols, formulae, um, and translate them into meaning. Or the stored information in somebody's energy field, for example, their memories as pictures or little videos playing. Um, your clairvoyance allows you to see, see that. All right, now the final style, number four, hearing things, unexplained voices, clicking or music, ringing in the ears and other disturbing symptoms, assuming that you're not well or that something's wrong with you because of it, um, learning which voice to trust because there are many voices in your head, uh, not being able to switch it off. I'm not being able to tell what's your voice from um, somebody else's voice. All right. So this one's clear audience or clear hear hearing or inner listening. It's an aspect of the fifth chakra located in the throat. And so if you've ever heard voices that weren't physically there, that's an example of your clear audience. Um, now, let me see. I have a, a kind of a funny example. I, I worked with a lady once. She was the accountant of a, a company I worked for, and uh, she was off work <laughs> for a while. And when she came back, we asked her what was wrong. And she said, well, I was hearing voices and they kept telling me to go shopping. And so I went shopping and she went shopping until she'd spent all of her money 
um, until her husband found out what she'd done. So, um, and she ended up getting uh, psychiatric treatment, which is something that can often happen to people opening their intuitive abilities when they don't know um, what's going on. So Claire, and a com another common way that this happens is that when you're drifting off to sleep or you're just waking up and you hear somebody say your name or you hear the music, uh, like angelic music, the music of the spheres, comforting music, um, or you get a song playing in your head that has the, just the right message that you, need, you were meant to hear. And then you turn the radio on and it's playing on the radio. Those types of experience we can call Claire audience. Claire audience is different than your inner voice. Your inner voice is you, um, the high vibration being. Um, Claire audience is you listening to other voices. So, which intuition style are you? Uh, share in the chat box if you would like. Tell us what your intuition style is. We'd love to know. Um, all right. So far, you've learned four ways of being intuitive, seven steps to awaken your intuition. And they're not the only ones, but they're kind of the things you have to come to get to the place where you um, take um, other steps, like learning specific meditation abilities that will um, help to activate your intuition as well. Some challenges on the spiritual journey. You've learned about the relationship between the chakras and intuition. I didn't include the um, case studies tonight, but if anyone wants to see some, they're at the spare slides. So um, I just wanted to take a moment to tell you a little bit about the School of Intuition. Uh, that's my school for teaching people how to develop their intuition. There's a whole bunch of different things for you to explore on my website, which includes um, meditations, some are free and some available for purchase, mentoring, so one-on-one -on -one training, receiving a reading. There's a style of reading I do called an intuition blueprint that gives you an overview of your intuitive abilities, um, healings to help you get unblocked, Courses, which I'm going to go into uh, in a bit more detail in a moment. So intuition development courses and free gifts. And I've got some free gifts for, the, for, for you guys for um, staying to the end of this webinar as well. So I want to tell you about this course, Unlock Your Intuition. The next class is about to begin next week. And I'd love to invite all of you to participate in that class. It's very much geared to what we've been talking about this evening to help you overcome those blocks, but also give you uh, additional training in um, how to um, specifically and safely open your intuition. Um, oh, it looks like I've given control to some, one of you to scribble on my screen. <laughs> I'm going to stop you doing it. Hang on a minute. I always forget to turn that off and there's always one in the crowd. Um, disable annotation. There we go. So there are, there's eight modules to the course. Um, each module focuses on one of the aspects that we spoke about this evening and introduces very specific meditation techniques and very specific practices that help you to clear your energy field so that you can be more aware, get more into your body so that you're having access to your intuition from within your body and teaching you how to take conscious control of your intuition as well. So each of these modules, in, oopsie, each of these modules includes a main teaching as well as a live Q&A. And the main teaching involves um, kind of like a lecture a bit like this, which will introduce some concepts and some ideas. And, um, and then a 45 minute meditation. So the best way to learn about your intu learn how to access your intuition is by doing it. It's not by learning through your intellect, it's by actually meditating in a, and being in a, in a meditative state where you can um, practice 
And so um, we start the beginning of each module introducing that, and then you get to practice for a few days. And then we do a live Q&A where it's you and I and the other students. And, um, and so you then get to ask your questions and share your experiences of what you have been learning about. There's also a bunch of support materials. So each module comes with its own workbook and uh, there are additional teachings in those workbooks besides what's delivered in the live materials and the um, lecture. There's an optional buddy system just because some students like to have a friend so they can keep each other encouraged. And there's also a Facebook group for outside of the Q&A, live Q&A where you can post questions and have them answered by myself or any others of the past students that have taken the course. There's a special bonus feature is all of the Q&A sessions of all of the students that have ever taken the course have been recorded and are available to you in the course environment. And so um, right now there's about 40 hours of footage of additional Q and A, and that and and what I do with every group of students is um, these these um, Q and A sessions. They answer their questions, but sometimes it's necessary to do an impromptu teaching, and so there are additional teachings buried within these um, Q and A archive. And the more that grows, the more that people say that that's actually the best part of the course. Um, there's a bonus book about the meditation techniques that you will learn. There's um, another bonus book if you want to. Um, we are going to be accessing our intuition directly through meditation, but there's also a card deck um, available electronically for you to play with and practice with as well. Um, if you feel like you need one-on-one -on -one attention from me, that's available at a very big discount. Um, and um, there are other, as a student, there are other uh, discounts available to you. For example, um, Intuition Blueprint Session, which is um, a specific reading that I do that gives you an overview of your intuitive abilities. The class schedule is, uh, usually we do the live Q&A on Thursday evenings from 6 to 7 Pacific, 9 to 10 Eastern. Um, and um, what I should also mention is at the moment, and I, this is the last group of students that I will be doing this with because um, there's so much information in the course now, but you also get to choose a bonus course, one of these four clairs. Um, so once you've completed Unlock Your Intuition, you can choose to um, go further develop your clairsentience, your claircognizance, your clairvoyance, or your clairaudience, and that's included in the price of the course. The program is really different because, um, basically because of your, you get to interact with me and you get one-on-one -on -one, um, time connecting with me and having your questions answered and a lot of the courses out there are um, so big that the teacher is only available in a general way to the students and the focus is on you all right so um, you're invited to this course which starts next week here's another quote <laughs> Someone who listened to his inner voice, Mahatma Gandhi. And this is the URL for the course if you are interested. It's uh, drlesliephillips.com, unlock your intuition. Um, and I will invite you if you think you might be interested and uh, you want to, we're going to do a QA in a minute where you can ask your questions. But if after that, you have more questions and you want to connect with me individually, then um, you are welcome to do so. And uh, this slide is giving you some information on how to do that. It gives you my cell phone number and my email address. 
So if over the next couple of days before the course begins, you want to connect with me to talk, you are welcome to do that. All right, thank you. Your free gifts that I'm going to send to you because you have attended this live um, event. I'm going to send you uh, an intuition style quiz so you can go into more depth about those different ways of being intuitive and start to get to know yourself and your own intuition style better. And a, few, a free mini course on, um, on your intuition style as well. Uh, there's probably not time for this one actually before the course starts, but usually on a Thursday morning, I'm available for people who might be interested to have um, uh, a chat with me. Okay, so sorry, I'm going to go back and just uh, we'll I'll stop the screen share, and we can go to the Q and A. But for anyone who's interested, I do have some slides about um, the price of the course and everything. But let me just go around the group and see if anyone has any questions. So how about you, Tammy? Any questions? No, no. no okay. Question. What, what uh, challenges did you have and what intuition style came up for you as being the strongest one? Actually, I've experienced all of them, but I think it's more clear cognizance. Great. Well, thank you for sharing. Um, and is it something that happens intermittently that, um, or is it something that you can consciously tune into and do when you want to? Generally intermittently, which is why I wanted to work on it. Great. Okay. Well, the course would really help you um, to learn how to do that. Um, all right, well, thank you for sharing. I'm gonna ask Karen. Hello, Karen. Hello. Okay, can't hear Karen. Yeah. If you have a question, Karen, write it in the chat box. Verna? Hi, Verna. Do you have, Hi. Any, do you have any questions? No, I don't have any questions, but I am interested in the course, in taking the course. Oh, that's great. Would you like to know um, the price of the course and all of that? I think I looked it up online, so okay. I already know. I think it's, is it around 600? Yeah, it's $699. Um, dollars, and there is a two pay, op a three pay option. So you, if you wanted, you could pay all of it or you could pay $233 a month. So it actually is, an, it's a really good price for the amount of information that's in the course. And, um, the course lasts for three months, but you have access to the course environment for longer than that. And okay. uh, in fact, it's, it, there's so much information in there at the moment, nobody gets through everything that's there. So um, that's, uh, you can go back and watch things that you didn't watch, watch the, first, the, the first way through. Great, okay, sounds good. Great, so Verna, um, I'll connect with you about the course then um, afterwards. All right, thank you. And uh, Annabelle, have you got any questions, Annabelle? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Oh, good. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, I'm just digesting it all, really. Yeah. Just having a, having a look at it all and you're just trying to get an understanding of it, really. Mm. Have you experienced your intuition? Um. Yeah, I think so. Like when I'm driving mm -hmm. um, or when I'm meditating, I seem to think of things that I wouldn't normally think of. So. Oh, cool. So you meditate. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that is, um, I don't know any other path really <laughs> that mm. helps you open your intuition. Uh, meditation is the way because, um, like I said in the presentation, you turn within, you tune out all of those external noises and influences and you get to focus on you and your intuition mm -hmm. is inside of you. So exactly when you're meditating, things come up that perhaps wouldn't come up into your awareness um, if, uh, if, you, if you weren't in that meditative state. Yes. Yeah, I agree. And also, I don't know, sometimes when there's, some, when there's a problem with something, 
Um, and then you'll just be doing some housework or something and then the solution comes up. And I go, oh, I didn't think of that. But I don't know whether that's just my mind, my intellect going, well, hang on. I don't well, know. you know, and there's a form of intuition called pragmatic intuition, which is that sort of very practical intuition that sort of says, um, I'll take my umbrella even though it's sunny and then it rains mm -hmm. later, that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just writing some notes here. Cool. Um, do you think you might be interested in the course, Annabelle? Yeah, well, I'll have a look through all of the okay. information. Um, I'll definitely do that. And um, Great. Yeah, just follow my intuition, I suppose. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much for explaining it all. It's, oh, it's you're welcome. great. You're welcome. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to go and see if um, Carol has a question. Carol, do you have a question? Unmute. Um. I've unmuted you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I have just been having some really bad feelings and I can't get rid of them and I can't pinpoint it right now. But there's such a, my stomach hurts. I'm real nervous and I feel it coming, but I don't know what it is right now. Hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to heal, like you suggested, by not being pulled in another direction, it's focus on me. And I've been praying, but I, I'm just kind of at a loss right now. Mm. Okay, well, well, the course teaches you some very specific techniques that help you with that. Um, and number one is you learn how to, um, how to ground and how to take charge of your own energy field. So whatever disturbances within your own energy field, you have a way of releasing it and letting it go. Um, you also start to learn about um, how to discern your energy from someone else's energy. So... Um, Am I, do. Yeah. yeah, am I feeling anxious because I'm anxious or because I'm, you know, someone else who's anxious is in my energy field. You learn how to clear the other person's energy out if it's not you. But if it is you, why is my body afraid? And you learn how to um, communicate with your body and how to answer those questions for, for yourself. So... Um, I'm sorry, I'm just going to put Annabelle on mute because she I forgot to put her on mute. Yeah, so, um, and it does look, it looks to me just very, very, just quickly looking at your energy that one of the main things that's going on is, um, and it sounds like a really funny thing to say, but this is the case for most people, your, your energy is not in your own space. So your energy is kind of, um, hovering around above the top of your head and your body is sort of left um, like an empty vessel that gets filled up with other people's energy. So I'm, I'm seeing that it's, um, it, it, it's got a bunch of um, energy that's not your energy. Um, okay. And it's afraid. Is there any, um, anything that has happened in your life um, recently, like people passing away or, um uh somebody else going through some some diff, some something painful yes i <clears throat> excuse me yes i just recently lost my husband of 30 years and my uh husband's best friend that's like a brother to both of us and his wife uh for many years yeah uh, for, he was with me when my husband passed and four months later he passed yeah. With my husband. I mean, yeah. they were inseparable. And so yeah. it was kind of weird. Four months later, she's yeah. like my sister. And yeah. I was, we were amazed that we were both widows within four months after so many years together. Yeah. Because yeah. what, what I was picking up was sort of like, um, I call it death energy, like a vibration of death in your energy field. So, and I that's it, a lot of that up it's, for some reason. 
it's scaring the bejeebas out of your body because your yeah. body your body's not ready to die and yet what's going on there's all this death here there's all this death energy here so it's very very frightening to the body so um the course would teach you how to get control of that it would teach you how to release and let go of those disturbances from your energy field would that make me like sometimes in the middle of the night around three, two or three in the morning, I will come up out of my sleep in a full fledged anxiety attack and I have to pray, meditate, you know, to get it off of me. So it don't go into full swing because I've had them at last me, you know, up to eight hours and they didn't start until my son-in-law uh, stopped breathing in my home and I had to do CPR on him and, Later on, a few hours later, he had passed, and that started them. Yeah. And so, so I've been having that stirring. Yeah. So at night, when, you, when we're asleep, um, we leave the body, and we, we, um, and we travel into other, other realities. Um, so all sorts yeah. of things can happen. One of the things that can happen is that you can, you can be focusing on working through your stuff, you can be meeting with the um, consciousness of, pe of your loved ones even. And then, um, you know, a lot of what we do on the astral plane is meant to stay on the astral plane. It's like what happens in Vegas. It's not meant to come into the body, but it's, it looks like you're, you're bringing some of those experiences into the body. And again, it's like the body can't process them. It doesn't understand them. It doesn't know what's going on and it frightens the body. So. Um, yeah, so that that's what's going on with you, and uh, you know, if you if you want to take the course, I believe it would really would help with that. There are other ways of dealing with it, you know, receiving healings from somebody like me as well. But I always feel it's better to learn to become empowered and learn these things for yourself because then you don't have to keep coming back to someone else to help you. You've got them for the rest of your life. Um, well, I I think that's what I've been doing all my life um, is each tragedy that I know about and I try to warn uh, that, that I can't let go of that pain of going through that. And it's like I've got a buildup of, you know, 60 years of each experience that I tried to help and try to yeah. warn without divulging too much and scaring people to, to, the bejeebies out of them. I, um, I, I got that buildup that where if someone reminds me of that incident, it's like I'm right back at that moment with all that pain, like it's never yeah. left. Yeah. And, and what you're doing is you are basically uh, storing, um, keeping that energy configuration that memory alive with all of its emotional content stored in your energy field and there are ways of de-energizing yeah. that and releasing it and letting it go so you're no longer um it's like you've got i don't know movie reels of all of these events all wrapped around yes. you um and uh you you don't have to uh you don't have to do that you can learn how not to i'm gonna just um put you on mute carol um Okay. Uh, just because um, people are disappearing and I, I want to respect people's yeah. time. But do you think you yes. might be interested in the course? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, that's fantastic. Um, all right, so I'm going to put you on mute. And I think, I don't believe I asked Taryn yet. Hi, Taryn. Hi. Do you, have, you. A, do you have a question? Um, I'm sort of just processing, um, actually listening to... Uh, what was, what was, her, I'm sorry, I just blanked on her name, the woman that was just speaking. Carol. Um, Carol, actually, you answered a lot, um, a lot of things for me um, in speaking. It, it's a different context, but, um, yeah, uh, you answered a lot, a lot for me. Um, um I did miss, I did miss the beginning. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm processing. I'm kind of processing that, what she was talking about. Um, so so while, while you, while you think if you have a question, I'll just mention that, um, okay. 
the course will give you techniques to process stuff that comes up. So one of the things that happens yeah. in the course in the Q and a session, it's a bit like this and we go around the circle and we ask questions and everyone, we're all mirrors for each other. So what somebody else says can trigger some things to come up Absolutely. for you. And so yeah. instead of just sitting there being triggered and not knowing what to do about it <laughs> in the, in the course, you learn techniques that say, ah, I'm being triggered. Something's coming up for me. I've, I've got some matching experiences with this, this, with Carol. So I right. now, and, and then you can process them in real time and clear them out of your energy. And in that way, the healing is magnified. You're all helping each other to heal even more than you would on your own by sharing your experiences. Because of like the synergistic. Yes. And, and energy. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. And I, I really liked, um, I don't know the, the movie analogy that you use, like there's movies going on. Yeah. All the time. Um, yeah, that it happens. And, um, yeah, <laughs> that was, that was reassuring actually yeah. thank you you're, you're welcome taryn do you think you might be interested in the course um yeah i definitely okay oh. so i'm gonna i'll follow up with you as well afterwards okay thank um, you now i'm not sure if i've asked karen yet so i i'm going to unmute karen and just check um karen have i asked you a question i think you're the one who who we can't uh hear <laughs> So if you do have a question, um, please write it in the chat and uh, I'd be happy to answer it for you. And, uh, and while we're waiting to see if you do that, I am going to unmute everybody and just check. Is there any other questions before we finish off today? Not no, for me. I don't have any questions. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So at the moment, I've got the Carol and Taryn um, and Verna, who's, who's gone, are interested in the course and that Annabelle's going to consider it. And um, I don't know about Karen because we can't talk to her. <laughs> so I'll write to you, Karen, um, in an email afterwards and, uh, and, and figure out where you sit and if you've got any questions. Well, thank you all so much. I'll be in touch. I'll be sending you those free gifts that I talked about. And I'll be in touch about thank the you. course as well. Thank you. Great. Thank you, thank you so thing. much. Oh, thank you're you. really welcome. Thank you all. And thank you, everyone, for sharing. God um, bless. Yeah. God bless. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.